Amen. You can have all of this world. Just give me. Amen. Morning everyone. Welcome. Welcome po kayong lahat sa pananambahan dito po sa Green Hills Christian Fellowship Katangas. In Psalms 1, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. This, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. This morning, sama-sama po tayong tumamba sa ating Diyos na buhay. Tayo po manalangin. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. Kami pong lahat, nagpapakumbaba, sumasamba. Katulad nga po ng inawit namin kanina. Give me Jesus. Ikaw, Panginoon, ang aming itatanghal, luluwalhatiin, at bibigyan ng parangal. Tayo po ang papuri sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning sa lahat, uh, sa lahat na nandito sa church, pati na rin po sa mga tahanan ninyo. Uh, welcome to GCF. If, you're, if, if it is the first time that you are here, we pray that uh, God will touch your hearts. And uh, mangusap po talaga ang Panginoon sa atin lahat. Uh, tulad nung binasa kanina, Psalm 1. Matagal na panahon na po binasa yon, ang ginawa at sinulat ni David. At ito rin po ay matagal na rin pong awitin. But it's a beautiful song. It tells us a story of what Jesus has done for us. And if you've gave his, given your life to Jesus, you have victory in Jesus. Tayo po ay magsitayo po dito, uh, dito sa church. Kung sa tahanan po, welcome din po kayong tumayo and to join us. Uh, to really praise God and sing. Even in your, kahit mag ka lang po sa bahay, you can stand up and praise the Lord. And we will be together as a church praising God. Victory in Jesus. This is an old, old story. How the Savior came from glory. He gave His life on Calvary. Before I knew Him, and all my love is doing. An old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me How I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And 
isang Diyos. Lord, before you loved me, before I knew you, and you plunged me to victory because of what Jesus has done. Kaya kami po nagre-rejoice in this victory in Jesus Christ. Oh, victory in Jesus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. yung victory natin kay Jesus it's not something we claim in a physical battle di ba? hindi naman siya physical na battle eh. it's uh, it's actually we claim the victory because he has cleansed us from our sins and because of that we are set free sabi nga sa scripture na if we would examine ourselves we would not come under judgment kasi nga natabunan na po tayo ng dugo, ng banal ng dugo ng aking, ating Panginoong Yesus. Kaya pwede po tayong lumapit sa ating Panginoon. Hindi po tayo dapat matakot o wala tayong atubili na lumapit po sa Kanya. Kahit na po i-examine niya po tayo. And uh, that's what, what we need to do today as we worship God. Let's just open our hearts to God. Saying, God, you know me kayo po ang uh, nakakaalam ng lahat ng aking iniisip, ng aking mga ginagawa. Kahit na po sa patago, alam niyo po yon. Kaya Panginoon, we, we just confess our sins before you kung meron po kaming mga, mga nagawang kasalanan, mga naiisip na hindi tama o hindi kaaya-aya sa inyo. Meron po kaming mga nasabi na nakasakit ng ibang tao. Lord, first of all, patawarin niyo po kami And we also think about how to ask forgiveness from others. Examine us, O Lord. Examine us. Ang lahat 
lahat ng aking ginagawa. Sa'yo ay hindi lingit ang lahat kong Salamat Panginoon, kilala mo ako Ang lahat ng bagay ay dilingit sa'yo Salamat Panginoon, tinutuwid mo ako Ikaw lang ang may alam ng aking patutungo sa inyo, hindi po dapat kami matakot. But rather, malugod po kami lumapit sa inyo dahil inaantay niyo po kami inyong mga anak na lumapit sa inyo. Salamat, Panginoon. Salamat. Amen. Ano man po ang kalagayan natin, alam po ng Diyos. Hindi ko man alam ang inyong mga sitwasyon, but the Lord knows Tulad ng awitin natin kanina. He knows everything. Sabi po sa Hebrews 11.6 And without faith, 
it is impossible to please God because everyone or anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Lumapit po tayo sa Panginoon. Handa po siya. Handa po siya. Sumagot sa inyong mga panalangin.
Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every life, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, meeting every need. I worship you. I worship. Lord, here we are. You can see us from head to toe, inside and out. Lord, we surrender to you, our Father, to you, our Savior, to you, our Counselor. Panginoon, Wag niyo po kaming i-fail. Answer us when we call upon you because that is our promise. You have said when we call upon you, you will answer. Lord, kahit po yung sagot niyo ay hindi hindi yung sagot na minsan na aming gustong madinig. Lord, answer us. Ano mang mga tanong namin sa buhay na to, Lord, as we throw it upon your seat, upon your feet, Lord, answer us. Yes, Lord God. Even ngayon, as we pray a pastoral prayer, Father, answer us, Lord. Jesus. Kayo po, Panginoon, ang aming Diyos. And we surrender to you. Yes, Lord. Because you are God and no one else. Lahat na iba-ibang mga Diyos na sinasamba ng ibang tao, wala po silang bibig, wala po silang mga isip, wala po silang mga mata, hindi po sila nakakita. Ngunit kayo ang Diyos na may tainga. Kayo ang Diyos na nakakarinig. Kayo ang Diyos na may puso na nakakaramdam ng aming mga niraramdam. Kaya Panginoon, hear us when we call upon your name. Lord, call upon you, our Father, and we will trust and put our faith in you. We will trust and put our faith in you. Thank you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name, our Savior, our Savior, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us continue to pray. Pwede na po kayo maupo. At uh, sa mga nasa tahanan, samahan niyo po kami sa pananalangin. Tayo po'y dumulog sa Panginoon. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day with a humble heart. Acknowledging that apart from you, we can do nothing, Lord. And uh, we are reminded of the song that we sang a while ago. Sabi sa awitin, salamat Panginoon, itinutuwid mo ako. It reminds us that you are a God who are a just God. Na hindi mo kinukonsente ang mga bagay na nagagawa namin na hindi ka lugod-lugod sa iyo. That is why as we start in this prayer, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Sige po, tayo lahat ay magpakumbaba sa harapan ng Diyos and let us ask God for His forgiveness. Namingi po tayo ng kapatawaran, paglilinis ng Panginoon. Nalangin po tayo sa saglit.
Yes, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon, itinutuwid mo ako. Patuloy mo kaming pinapaalalahanan upang kami lumakad ayon sa iyong katwiran. At sa pagtutuwid na iyon, Panginoon, minsan ay nagtatampo pa kami, minsan hindi namin gusto ang mga nangyayari o mga bagay na pagtutuwid mo. Patawad po, Panginoon. Subalit, ang katotohanan, ang lahat ng ito ay para sa ikabubuti namin. Salamat po. Salamat po, Panginoon. At patawad po. At sa pagkakataong ito, we continue to come, Lord, in the, your throne of grace. Patuloy na pinapanalangin ng aming bansa. Na patuloy na ikaw ang siyang kumilos, maghari, manahan. Maging sa mga nangyayari sa uh, ibang bansa na mga kaguluhan, mga gera between Israel and other countries, sa India, sa patuloy na paglaganap ng uh, uh, virus, at sa mga naapektuhang lubha, Panginoon. Kasama ng bansa pong ito namin, minamahal na bansa. Lord, have mercy. Ikaw ang nakakaalam ng aming mga patutunguhan kaya, Panginoon, sa iyong paanan, amin po, Panginoong, idinudulog, Panginoon, ang kalagayan. Maging ng lokalidad namin dito sa Batangas. And even on our surroundings, in our families. Tunay nga pong palapit ng palapit. At marami na pong naapektuhan. Even some of our members of the church. Lord, we pray. Lord, na Ikaw ang siyang kumalinga. Ikaw ang yumakap. Ikaw ang magparamdayin na malabay mong pakpak. For You cares, God. You cares for us. And we pray, Lord, na Ikaw ang siyang magbigay ng kalakasan, pag-asa sa anumang nararanasan ng bawat isa. Hindi man sa COVID virus, kung hindi sa Uh, mga uncertainties sa mga hindi kasiguruduhan ng bukas sa mga negosyo, trabaho at mga bagay ng pangyayari sa kagulumihan ng aming mga damdamin at puso kaisipan that anxiety and depression na napaka-prone sa panahong ito Lord, touch the heart and mind of everyone who feel those feelings Ikaw po, Panginoon, ang maglagay sa puso ng bawat isa that they are loved, that they are cared by you. And of course, Lord, bigyan mo din kami ng puso, bawat isa sa amin, na yung mga tao na ipinapaalala mo sa amin in our prayer time, Lord, we send messages of hope, of verses that will encourage these people to move forward in their lives. Maging Panginoon sa pagkakataong ito as we worship you, nawa Panginoon ay ikaw ang patuloy namin mabigyan ng parangal at luwalhati. Ikaw ang mataas, ikaw Panginoon ang, ang maitanghal. Gamitin mo ang programang ito, Panginoon, sa mga nakasubaybay at nakikinig Panginoon, mangusap ka sa amin sa pamamagitan ng paghayag ng iyong salita. Salamat, banal na spirito, na maging sensitibo po kami sa mga katagang maririnig namin. Na ito'y magbibigay ng pag-asa, ng buhay sa mga nawawala ng pag-asa. Salamat for your word is a living word giving life to everyone who hears and let our heart be a good soil na mataniman ng mga salitang ito. Salamat po, O Diyos. Maghari ka, manahan ka sa bawat isa sa amin. Luwalhati, parangal, ay sa'yo namin ibinabalik. 
sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. And amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Patuloy po tayong uh, uh, magpanalanginan sa bawat isa. Napakasarap po na sa ating oras ng panalangin ay kabahagi po tayo na magipanalangin natin ang ating uh, uh, kapwa. At sa pagkakataong pong ito, tayo po ay dadako sa ating uh, pagbibigay o pagkakaloob. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. By this we know love, that He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brothers in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Sa panahon pong ito, minsan napaka, napakadaling isipin na um, mag, magmaramot tayo kasi hindi natin alam ang bukas at hindi tayo tumulong o magbigay, ng, magbigay puwang para sa pagkakawang gawa. Subalit so, bilang mga naliwanagan ng salita ng Diyos, ito po ay isang daan upang uh, tayo ay maging kasangkapan ng pag-ibig at pagmamahal ng Diyos. Hindi tayo laging iisipin ng pakabig. But our hearts will be generous enough kung ano man yung ipinagkaloob ng Diyos. Lalong higit sa pagbibigay ng ating mga ikapo at kaloob. Nawapo, ang mga bagay na ito ay maibigay natin na may kagalakan mula sa ating puso. Ayaw po yung manalangin para po sa ating mga offerings. Panginoon, salamat sa pagkakataon ito. As we give, Lord, salamat for that love in action na hindi lamang sa salita but higit sa lahat, ito ay aming ginagawa. Ang pagtulong sa aming kapwa, pagkakawang gawa at higit sa lahat ang may kagalakan na magbigay ng kaloob, Panginoon. Salamat po sa mga biyayang ito at ibinabalik namin, O Diyos, ang para sa iyo. Sa iyo po ang papuri sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Paalala po sa ating pong mga offerings. Meron pong, mga, meron pong uh, uh, account ang naka-flash sa inyong screen. At paalala po, meron po tayong mas pinadali na pagbibigay through Gcash sa mga nasa tahanan. Pwede po kayong magkaloob through Gcash. Meron po diyang step 1, step 2 na ipinapakita namin sa screen. At nawa po masundan at matonghayan nyo po yung mga bagay na iyan. Mas pinadali upang tayong lahat ay makabahagi sa gawain ng Panginoon. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Tunghayan po naman natin ngayon ang pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Purihin po ang Diyos. Morning po sa ating lahat. Tapo kayo. Inintay ko lang po yung title dumabas. Wala pa rin po. Ah, ang title po ng ating sermon for this morning ay The Troubles of Obedience to God. Sa title pa lang po yun, ah, nagsasabi po na when we obey God, it's not a walk in the park. Hindi po nagiging madali ang pagsunod sa Diyos. Nasubukan na ba man ninyo na may pinagagawa ang Diyos sa inyo, sinunod nyo, at pagkatapos yung sunod, o habang sinusunod nyo, ang daming hadlang na dumarating sa buhay ninyo. 
Ang pagsunod sa Diyos ay may kalakip na kagalakan. May pagpapala. Ngunit, ayon din po sa salita ng Diyos, at mula sa aral na makukuha natin mula sa Exodus chapter 5, there are troubles of obedience to God. Let me share my personal experience na nung habang sinisimulan po namin yung foundation, nagkaroon din po kami ng malaking trouble. Nagkaroon po ng kasulatan, and yet, hindi po naisaayos yung mga dokumento ng lupa. Dumating po sa point na na-lockout po kami. Uh, may tatanong po natin kay Tito Ray kung ano po nangyari. We were locked out for many months and ang katanungan po, kung ito ang nais ng Diyos para sa foundation, bakit ganun ang nangyari? Troubles came to the foundation. At dito po sa pag-aaral natin sa umagang ito, sa Exodus chapter 5, mada, makikita po natin ng napakaraming troubles na dumating kay Moses, kay Aaron, at sa mga Israelites. Atin pong basahin yung mga verses. Simula po sa verse 1 on chapter 5. Can I invite everyone here to please stand? At sa inyo pong nasa inyong tahanan, samahan niyo po kami sa pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos. Let's read together. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are so many and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foreman. You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks, as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, that they may labor at it and pay no regard to their lying words. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your straw yourselves wherever you can find it. But your work will not be reduced in the least. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work, your daily tasks each day, as when there was straw. And the foremen of the people of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and were asked, Why have you not done all the, your task of making bricks today and yesterday, as in the past? Then the four men of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks. And behold, your servants are beaten. But the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle. You are idle. That is why you say, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Go now and work. No straw will be given you, but you must still deliver the same number of bricks. 
The foremen of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, You shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily task, each day. They met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them, as they came out of, from Pharaoh. And they said to them, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us think in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O Lord, why have you done evil to these people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to these people, and you have not delivered your people at all. Tayo po yung manalangin. Panginoon, muli, ito ang iyong kasulatan. Ito yung banal na salita. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us and continue to strengthen our faith from what we will learn from Exodus chapter 5. Holy Spirit, enlighten us once more. Grant us the faith. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Salamat po. May now be seated. Thank you. Again, troubles of obedience to God. Simulan po natin sa verse 1. The first trouble, opposition. Okay. Magita po natin yan sa verses 1 and 2. Yun nga po, di, si Moses at Aaron nga daw pumunta na kay Pharaoh, at nung pumunta sila, dala nila ang kautusan ng Diyos. So, imagine natin yung approach sila kay Pharaoh. Malamang meron silang sense of confidence. Meron din silang sense of authority because they know the Lord. And they knew exactly na ang kautusan to ay galing kay Lord. And so, with confidence, they approach Pharaoh. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, ito ang aming Panginoon, ito ang sinabi niya. Let my people go that they may hold the feast to me in the wilderness. Merong purpose yung paglabas nila sa Egypt, which is to worship God. And that's the purpose that God almost always set when He commands us to do something. That is to worship Him, to glorify Him with such an order. Ganun nga ang approach ni Moses at Aaron. But then, as we will learn, even to us, mga experiences natin, when we approach somebody because we know this is what God wants us to do, at kapag yung in-approach natin ay hindi nakakakilala sa Panginoon, tulad ng response ni Pero, ang maari nating matanggap. Ito ang kasagutan ni Pero, Who is the Lord that I should obey His voice and let Israel go? Sino ba yung Diyos nyo? Sino ba yan? Bakit kailangan ko siyang sundin? I do not know the Lord and moreover, I will not let Israel go. Hindi ko kilala yung Diyos na yan. Bakit ko siya kailangan sundin? Bakit kailangan palisin ko yung Israel? Sino ba siya? In the same way, when, when we approach somebody who do not know the Lord, hindi nila kilala ang Panginoon, ganun din ang posibleng kasagutan, opposition. O nga, Meron kayong Diyos, meron kang Diyos, pero hindi ko kilala yung Diyos mo. Bakit kailangan kong sumunod? Bakit kailangan kong gawin yung pinagagawa ng Diyos nyo? At hindi lang opposition ang maaari nating matanggap. Suspicion. Yung ating motive ay maaring questionin, pagdudahan. Bakit mo ginagawa yan? Sabi sa verse 3, Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Within, with us let, please let us go on a three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. 
So itong pinagagawa ng Panginoon para kami ay makapag-worship, makapag-offer sa Kanya. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses, Aaron, bakit kailangan mong dalhin yung mga tao na yan from their work? At kadalasan, yung sarili pa rin ang naisip. Tulad dito kay Pharaoh, yung sarili na naisip. Pag pinalis ko yung mga salitang yan, ang dami kong project eh, ang dami kong pinagagawa. Eh pag pinalis mo yung mga isalita, di, paano na ako? Paano na yung mga plano ko? Yung mga paglago ng aking kaharian? Mababawasan, hindi matutuloy. Mababawasan yung free labor ko. Kumbaga, yung self-benefit niya, maapektuhan. Kaya itong sagot ni, ni Pharaoh, Get back to your burdens. May suspicion. At sabi pa niya sa verse 5, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. Ang inisip ni Pero, napakadami na ng mga Hebreyong to, siguro kulang yung trabaho nila. Siguro napakarami nilang oras, napakarami na nila eh. Uh, yung same work, tapos dumami na sila, uh, kaya nakakaisip pa sila ng mag-journey at mag-worship. Eh, napakarami na kasi nila. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen. Yung taskmasters, mga Egyptians po yan. Yung mga foremen, uh, yun yung mga Israelites na ginawang foremen. Kumbaga, May taskmasters, tapos may foreman, tapos may mga, mga labor, kumbaga sa construction. Labor, lahat ng Israelites, kumuha ng mga Israelita, inassign as foreman, so ikaw ang foreman dito sa grupong to, ikaw ang foreman sa grupong to. Tapos meron pang pinaka-supervisor, yung taskmaster na Egyptian. So, pinatawag, at ito ang inutos. You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. Okay. Pag narinig niyo yung salitang straw, ano yung papasok sa mind niyo? Yung pang soft drinks. <laughs> Ako, hindi. Yung panali. <laughs> straw. <laughs> so yung straw dito ay isa sa mga hinahalo sa clay to make bricks para maging stable daw yung, yung bricks. So, Inaani yan, kinukuha para isama, ihalo. So noon, pinuprovide sa mga Israelite workers yung straw. Pero ngayon, yun nga, inisip ni Fero, eh, kayo napakarami na eh, di, kayo na kumulang straw, hindi na ipuprovide sa inyo. Okay. But the number of bricks that they made in the past, you shall impose on them, you shall by no means reduce it. Ganun pa rin ang dami ng bricks Kung sa isang araw, ang kailangan mong i-produce na bricks ay sampo, ngayon, ikaw na mag ng straw, no? pero sampo pa rin ang i-produce mo. Hindi binawasan. At siyempre, kailangan nilang maghanap ng straw bago nilang magawa ang bricks. For they are idle. Yun ang suspicion ng, ng Pharaoh at na uwi sa oppression. For they are idle, pa-Facebook, Facebook lang kayo eh. Pa-YouTube, YouTube lang kayo eh. Kaya siguro naisipan yung bumiyahe. Therefore, they cry, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Kaya, nagpa-plano pa kayong mag, mag-journey para mag-worship, mag-offer sacrifice sa Panginoon nyo. Kasi nga, you're idle. Marami kayong oras. Verse 9, Let heavier work be laid on the men that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. Ito ang solusyon, sabi ni Pharaoh. Pahirapan ng trabaho, dagdagan ng trabaho, yung straw, kanya-kanyang kuha. At kapag busy na uli sila, wala lang silang time mag-Facebook, Facebook, makakalimutan nila yung pagsisinungaling nila na gusto pa nilang mag at mag-worship. Nauwi sa oppression dahil pinahirapan nga lalo ang mga Israelites. So yun nga ang ginawa ng taskmaster. Tsaka yung foreman, yung tusay mga foreman na itong sinabi ni Pharaoh, ito ang kailangan yung gawin. 
Verse 12, So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. At yun nga, kailangan pang kumalat yung mga Israelites para hanapin yung straw. Dahil nga, kailangan nilang idagdag na sa trabaho nila yun. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work, your daily task each day, as when there was straw. And the four men of the people of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmaster had set over them, were beaten nung hindi na nila maproduce yung same number of bricks each day, or in a period of time, ano nangyari? They were beaten, itong mga four men. Pinarusahan na, sinaktan na. Bakit hindi nyo nagawa yung para sa araw na to, tsaka yung sa kahapon, tulad ng dati? So here, we find yung opposition, nauwi sa suspicion ngayon, nauwi na sa oppression. At dahil hindi nga magawa ng foreman, nagsubok ang mga foreman na i-appeal kay Fero yung kanilang sitwasyon. Dumapit sila kay Fero at inexplain nila yung kanilang katatayuan. Bakit ganito, Fero? Bakit nyo bakit mo kami tinuturing na ganito? Pinagdagdagan ng trabaho, kailangan mong kailangan namin hanapin sarili namin stro nung hindi na maging magawa. Ngayon kasalanan pa namin, hindi pa kasalanan to ng mga taskmaster. Ito ang sagot ni Fero. You are idle. Kayo ay maraming oras. Wala kayong ginagawa. Marami kayong free time. Inulit pa nga, you are idle, you are idle. That's why you say, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Dahil marami kang oras, marami kayong oras, kaya't naisipan pa ninyong magdala ng sacrifice sa inyong Diyos. Ganun pa man, ni-reiterate ng Pharaoh yung kanyang utos. No, no straw will be given you, but you will deliver the same number of bricks. Now, these four men saw that they were in trouble when they said, you shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily task, it's day. So, ganun yung feeling ng mga four men. We are in trouble, deep trouble, sapagkat itong inuutos ni Pharaoh hindi namin matutupad. And from that point, nakasense na sila ng great fear. Because not being able to comply with the commands of the Pharaoh will end in not good. They know that they will be punished severely. After which, Moses and Aaron, na uh, nakataon siguro nasa labas ng palace, uh, lumabas itong mga foremen at, siya, at sila'y nakita. And sabi ng mga foremen, The Lord look on you and judge. Siguro, pwede natin intindihin yung mga foremen dahil alam na nga nila na nung nag sila kay Pharaoh, hindi sila pinayagan, but yet they were warned furthermore alam nila na great trouble awaits them. So nung paglabas sila nakita nila si Moses and Aaron, sinisi na nila si Moses and Aaron. The Lord look on you and judge. If, if we were Aaron and Moses, how would, how would we feel about that? You know, God instructed you to do something and then, initially, you hesitated, tulad ng ginawa ni Moses in the, from the previous chapter. Marami siyang excuses. Remember from last Sunday sermon? Marami siyang excuses. Ayaw niyang gawin. And then, nung ginawa niya, ito pa ang kanyang inabutan. Condemnation from his fellow Israelites. The Lord judge you. Hirap, di ba? When, when all you wanted to do was to obey God, and yet when you obeyed God, this is what you are now experiencing. 
Not from the people who oppose you, but from your own people. You're being condemned. Just because you obey God, you led them through what God wanted them to do. And then, ito marinig mo mula sa kanila. At dahil sa iyo, Moses at Aaron, you have made us think in the sight of Pharaoh. Okay lang kami noon eh. We can survive. Although we were slaves, but then we were able to fulfill yung mga inuutos ni Pharaoh. But now, you have made us think in the sight of Pharaoh. Pinag-iinitan na kami. Yung inuutos niya ay imposible. And have put a sword in, the, in their hand to kill us. Yes. Nakikita nila yung possible severe punishment. The sword, which is to put them to death for not being able to deliver the number of bricks they were required to do so. The punishment of death from the hands of Pharaoh. And because of such fear in the hearts of these four men, they bring the blame to Moses and Aaron. We condemn you for what you have done. Now, our lives are in danger because you, Moses and Aaron, brought us to this situation. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you done evil to these people? Lord, okay naman sila eh. Pero dahil sa utos mo, ito na nangyari sa mga Israelites. They are now in the brink of being put to death. Lord, ikaw nagdala nito, itong evil na to sa iyong bayan. Why did you ever send me? Bakit po pa ba ako pinadala? Bakit mo inutusan na gawin to? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this will. Wala namang mabuting nangyari nung pinaputa mo kay Pharaoh, nung sinabi kay Pharaoh, ito yung gusto mo. Wala maganda nangyari, but evil. The people of Israel are oppressed more. They are now in the brink of being put to death. And you have not delivered your people at all. Lord, you have not done anything. You, the deliverer, have not fulfilled your role. The heavy burden in the heart of Moses, the one whom God raised to deliver Israelites out of Egypt, and yet at this point, he was totally down. Questioning God. While I was preparing for this sermon, nagisip ako ng title. So, isa sa mga naisip ko ay when obedience to God brings troubles. Same po yung yung title ng ating sermon. Dahil sumulod ka sa Diyos, nagkaroon ka ng trouble. Diba? Minsan, mas madaling hindi sumunod sa gusto ng Diyos. Yung standard ni God, yung kautusan ni God, yung values ni God, pag kinompromise natin yun, mas magaan ang buhay. Ngunit, pag may obedience, sometimes, they bring troubles. Uh, natawa si Ani no nakita niya to kasi my youngest daughter uh, she updates and upgrades my PowerPoints before Sunday. No nakita niya, Dad, ain't easy? <laughs> yeah, obedience to God ain't easy. Di ba? Not easy. Kasi we we live in a world wherein you know, everything would, 
would be, uh, we would appreciate more easy tasks, more comfort, right? Uh, microwave, toaster, uh, salip na magsimula ka ng gatong, uh, internet, everything. We, but even at times when we want to obey God, we want it to be easy. We want the result to be easy. Oh, yeah, I'm obeying God. It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be comfortable. Uh, when you obey God, sabi ng iba, pag basta, sinunod mo ang Diyos, lahat magiging maayos. Uh, obviously, from Exodus 5, we have learned that's not true theologically. Let us be careful with that. Uh, wag natin, wag tayong maging comfortable na Basta, pag sumunod ako kay God, magiging comfortable. No, that's not the case. But surely enough, the Lord will bring much joy in your heart, even in the midst of troubles. And that's true. Okay? Obedience to God ain't easy. Another possible title, the struggles of obedience to God. When we obey God, there are struggles. Actually, this was recommended by my daughter, Annie. The struggles of obedience to God. So here, the summary of what we have learned from Exodus chapter 5. The troubles of obedience to God. Opposition. Suspicion. Accusation. Oppression. Condemnation. Rejection. All these six scions are possible results when we obey God. I'll be reading a few verses from the New Testament para makita natin more yung theology ng suffering when you obey God. Sabi ba sa 1 Peter 2.15, For to this you have been called, mga Christians, because Christ also suffered for you. Ang Panginoon ay nag-suffer for us. Di ba yan ang hindi maintindihan ng mga, ng mga Jews when Christ was here? Kung iyan ang Messiah, bakit kailangan siya mag-suffer sa cross? That's why they wouldn't take Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, because they couldn't understand the theology of suffering. All they wanted was a, a kingly leader who will, who will stop the opposition, the, those who oppose the people of God. Because Christ suffered for you. Kung si Christ nga nag-suffer for you, Leaving you an example, ito ay isang halimbawa for you to follow. When we say we follow Christ, we don't only follow Christ for the sake of blessing, we don't only follow Christ for the sake of Jeremiah 29.11, but we also follow Christ with this example of suffering, so that you might follow in His steps. We say we follow Christ, we follow his example of suffering. Philippians 1.29 For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Okay? Hindi lang para maniwala, manampalataya, but also ang kasama doon, is to suffer for the sake of Christ. Dito sa 1 Peter 4, maraming verses, uh, isang section siya, uh, will really give us a clear understanding with regard to the theology of suffering. Simula natin sa verse 12. Do not be surprised at a fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. When you obey God, don't think of it as a strange. 
na may kasamang suffering. Tinunod ko ang Diyos, merong sacrificial elements needed, huwag ka magugulat. Bakit kailangan magkaroon ng sakripisyo? But rather, be joyous. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. May joy na kaakibat ng pag-suffer para kay Kristo. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering. And yes, if you are experiencing suffering right now because of your obedience to God, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will grant you such joy in your heart knowing that you are suffering for the name of Christ. Of course, it's not easy. Uh, of course, we are nalunong ka tayo, nagtataka tayo, nagko-question tayo. But this is what the Word of God says. Rejoice when you share Christ's suffering that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. Habang nagsasuffer ka, mayroon kang joy, and then yung joy mo nagmumultiply as you await the revelation of Jesus Christ. Anong gusto mo ngayon? Yung lahat sa buhay na to ay lahat komportable dahil may pinagagawa si Lord sa iyo. Ayaw mo. Kasi ano, mahirap. Hindi ka sure. Anong gusto mo? Yun ba o yung sinunod mo yung Diyos sa pinagagawa sa iyo, ang daming sakripisyo ang kasama, and yet, yung joy mo nagmumultiply as the day of coming of Jesus Christ becomes nearer and nearer. Yung pagdakakaita ka ng balita. Dako, may, may war na sa Israel. Isa sa mga signs. Itong COVID, di matapos-tapos. Isa sa mga signs. Ayan, lumindol na naman. Isa na namang sign. Salip na matakot ka, di ba? Hindi ba't nagmumultiply yung iyong joy? Maaring bumalik na ng Panginoon. So lalo kang nagagalak. Lalo kang nagpupursiging mag-share ng gospel dahil alam mo, Marami pang hindi nakakilala and yet you want them to know Christ. Nag, i, nagiging more intense yung desire mo to serve God. Nagiging more intense yung you want to share the gospel to other people. Rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering. More so when His glory is revealed. So, oh, 1 Peter 4.14 If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Pag ininsulto ka, sino pong nakakaalam ng kahulugan ng KKKK? Kanin, kubo, karunungan, kalinga, para sa kalulatian ni Kristo. May mga nagjo-joke, yung KKK daw, kambingan, kabayuhan, <laughs> joke lang. But when we were threatened, we were also insulted. Binigyan nila ng kahulugan yung KKK ng kakaiba. Kalokohan. If they only knew the God who made that a possibility, they wouldn't insult such a work of God. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. Hindi mo kailangan ikahiya pag ininsulto ka dahil sa pagsudod mo sa Diyos. Stand firm. The insult may come from all angles. Stand firm because you know in your heart, that what you're doing is in obedience to God. First Peter 4.19 Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. You entrust it to God. 
You entrust yourself to God. You entrust the result to God because you know exactly that what you're doing is in obedience to what God has commanded you. Yeah, the picture may not be clear. Troubles are, are present. You do not know what to do. You just surrender yourself to God and trust yourself. Yeah, uh, let me confess, when, when we were locked out for many months, I remember myself praying, Lord, when will you intervene? Because I do not know what to do anymore. We have, we have tried out all possible negotiations, offered, offered more than what we agreed upon, and yet we were still locked out. So, panalangin ko sa Panginoon, Lord, kailan, kailan ka ba kikilos? I just wait on you. I don't know what to do anymore. But I'm so glad that during even that time, although there were doubts in my heart, I knew that God will, will do and act upon it in His timing. Kung dito, sabi dito, while doing good, ito po yung life verse ko nung sitwasyon na yan. 1 Peter 2.15 For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Nangusap po yan ng Panginoon sa akin with this verse. Continue doing good. Continue ministering to those to those poor children. Minister to them. And you will silence the ignorance of foolish people. Kaya gustong gusto ko yung verse na yan. Ginamit po yan ng Panginoon para sa akin. Another possible title na naisip ko for this sermon ay ito. When your life's chapter ends with questions. Diba yung, itong Exodus chapter 5? It ends with Moses questioning God. Lord, <laughs> nothing good came out from your order for me. Evil ang nangyari sa Israelites. And you haven't done anything, sabi ni Moses kay God. When your life's chapter ends with question, perhaps you're in a chapter in your life right now that you have more questions than answers. Maring yung sitwasyon mo ay nagdudulot ng mas maraming pagdududa. Nagtatanong ka, Lord, bakit hindi ka pa kumikilos? And perhaps, God has a way to end this chapter actually. Dahil nga tayo ay mga taong gusto natin ng kasagutan agad. Di ba? Yung may prayer nga na nakita natin sa mga stickers. Lord, give me patience right now. And that's why this chapter 5 is so interesting. It ends with questions rather than answer. And and many times in our life, may mga chapters tayo sa buhay natin, may mga weeks tayo sa buhay natin na they end with questions. So what do you do? How do you respond? When your week, perhaps this week, is ending with more questions rather than answers. Kaya po, nansin yung tahanan? Ano pong gagawin nyo kung ang linggo ninyo oh, ay ngayon, matatapos na at mas marami pa kayong katanuan kaysa kasagutan sa katatayuan nyo? yung verses towards the end of chapter 5. 
Lord, why have you done evil to these people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to these people, and you have not delivered your people at all. Ganon nagtapos ang chapter 5. The troubles of obedience to God. Let us remind ourselves that when we obey God, let us be ready to face opposition, oppression, rejection, condemnation, because just as Christ suffered for us, may we be ready to suffer for Christ. Let us pray. Panginoon, this is a Sunday na binibigyan mo kami ng mas malalim na katuroan. Nawa, Panginoon, kaming mana ng patataya ay patuloy na lumago, mas maging matatag sa aming pananampalataya. Sapagat tulad din po na pag-aralan namin sa umagang ito, na ang pagsunod sa iyo, Panginoon, ay hindi madali. At maaari kaming makatanggap ng maraming hadlang, pag-uusig, paglalait. Ngunit, Panginoon, sa iyo namin tinataas ang aming sarili. Pagkat ikaw ang Diyos na buhay, ikaw ang Panginoong Jesus, ipigay sa amin ng kaalaman patungkol sa iyong kaharian at buhay na walang hanggan sa pamagitan ng iyong suffering. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, to those of you who are fans of Marvel Avengers, by this time, nakikita na niyo yung credits. And then, what do Marvel Avengers fan do, hinihintay hanggang matapos ang credits. Sapagkat, magkakaroon ng post-credit, right? Uh, yeah, imagine na lang nyo, may mga daming, daming letra. Maakit dito. At may, minsan, five minutes, di ba? Ang dami, di ba? So, may kitaywa tayo ng five minutes. Maakit yung letra. Ito na po yung post-credit. Chapter 5, yung opening verse niya, or verses, ito yung sinasabi. Pumunta si Aaron, si Moses kay Pharaoh, Pero, let us go, so that we may call the feast for God. Ito yung key opening verse. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey His voice and let Israel go? I, sabi ni Pharaoh, I, why should I obey God? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. Yung closing verses ng chapter 5, itong sabi ni Moses, Oh Lord, what, why have you done evil to these people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, you, he has done evil to these people. And you, you Lord, Lord, you have not delivered your people at all. Wala ka pang ginagawa, Lord. Now look at the opening verse of chapter 6 that we will 
tackle next Sunday. Look at the verses in chapter 6, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will send them out. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of this land. Kung sa chapter 5, ang sabi ni Pharaoh, Ako, hindi ko papayagan ng Israel. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa chapter 6, Tingnan mo ang gagawin ko. Kung ayaw ni Pharaoh, sa chapter 5, na palisi ng Israel, gagawa ko at kikilos ako. At si Pharaoh mismo ang magtataboy sa Israel palabas ng Egypt. Hindi lang niya papayagan, pagtataboy niya sapagat ako ang Diyos na kumikilos. Salamat sa ating Diyos dahil sa katapusan, siya ang may alam ng katuluhan ng istorya. And uh, we thank God for the ending of that story. Lalo na sa atin na mananampalataya sa Diyos. Kaya naman po ang ating dinadaanan sa sitwasyon na to, we know we can trust God. Tulad ng kanta kanina, no, ng, kakantahin natin natin uli. In the morning when I rise. Sa umaga, hindi ko alam kung pag-gising nyo, no, pong nadatat na nyo, pag nad, nabubulaga ba kayo sa problema. Minsan ako, nagigising ako na hindi na ako makatulog dahil ang dami kong iniisip. Uh, o kaya, ang bumubulaga sa kayo, yung sunrise, napakaganda naman. Ano? So, but every day, every day, uh, if you we just remember to ask Jesus, uh, Lord, ano ba ang uh, gagawin ko ngayong araw? Every day, just walk with Jesus. Kung meron naman sa inyo na alone, lalo na kung na-quarantine kayo sa ospital dahil mag-isa kayo, uh, Jesus is also there. Hindi po kayo nag-iisa. And yung huli po, <laughs> when I die, it may not be physical death, but dying in yourself, obeying ano yung kailangan pinapagawa sa inyo ng Diyos. Si Jesus din po ang kasagutan doon. So let's reflect on this song as we sing it. We may want to stand up or you want to sit down. Reflect, reflect on this song and just give your life and surrender to God. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I am alone, oh, when I am alone, Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus, and when I come to die, oh when I come to die and when I come to die 
Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. The Lord. We are reminded this day of obeying God. Maybe there's trouble, but certainly God is still there. So, salamat po sa mensahe. Medyo na-excite ako. Kala ko may kasunod na kaagad. Yung pala next week pa. So, abangan po mga kapatid ang mga susunod na kabanata ng ating sermon series. Ah, pa-excited ng pa-excite yung uh, ating tinatahak na pag-aaral. So, uh, abangan po ang mga susunod na kabanata. Na-excite tuloy ako. Gusto ko nang hilahin yung next Sunday. Amen. Para po sa mga paalala announcement, CBAP's May is special. In collaboration with World Teach, we'll go through a study on the book of Ruth entitled Refuge. Let's discover how we can find home in a world of change. Ito na po yung last week, May 22, Saturday po, 9 to 11 a.m. only. Registration fee is 100 pesos, open to all CBAP men and women. Para po mag-register, step one, pay your registration fee sa G- uh, GCash number 0925-455-6741. Rosario Almadin. Take note po of uh, your reference number. Step 2, access Zoom registration link. Fill out the form and input your GCash reference number. Link is flashed on your screens or visit the CBAP Facebook page. And step 3, wait for email confirmation. You will receive the Zoom link via email. Committee will verify your registration and send materials to you in a separate email. Amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Nakaka-excite po itong ating pananambahan. Praise the Lord. Purihin po natin ang Panginoon. Let us close in prayer. Tayo po itumayo. Kayo po nandiyan niyang tahanan. Let us conclude with this prayer. May the God who is sovereign and all-powerful of all continue to speak to you and has you according to how he has called you to fulfill his purposes. May he strengthen you, empower you to do so. May the joy of suffering for Christ fill your heart as you obey him. Glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord continue to use all of us in His expansion of His kingdom. Amen. Awitin po natin ito ulit. Victory in Jesus.
see.